um, Her Excellency Hilda Suka Mafuze, who will be joining us via Zoom. Um, and so we're going to set that up and we're going to have her give her speech, which is the opening speech, and after that, we will um, roll out. Thank you. Okay, uh, uh, distinguished honorable officer, from the office of the President of the Republic of Ghana, uh, private sector officials, representatives of the media houses, yearly, all protocols observed. Uh, I would like to begin by saying how pleased I am to have been invited to speak here today. Uh, it is truly an honor to join all of you in the preparation for the 2022-2023 Black History Festival in Africa and in the diaspora communities around the world. Making sure that people of African descent in America's culture and achievements gain their right for recognition. History, historian Carter G. Woodson started Black History Month in 1926. This celebration, in fact, was only one day in February, every year. But due to its importance and the role it played in American society, primarily black, and eventually everywhere in the world, where people of African descent lived, the entire month of February was dedicated for festivities and reflections. Launching this media campaign about this valuable history and the great value it represents, I want to draw your attention to why this celebration is relevant in modern history. Allow me to use a few facts to make my point. Dr. Spencer Wells, holds a PhD in biology from Harvard University. He was a postdoctoral fellow at Stanford University and a research fellow at the University of Oxford. Dr. Wells led the genographic project from 2005 to 2015 as an explorer in the residence at the National Geographic Society. The project was launched as a research project in collaboration with scientists and universities around the world with the goal of revealing patterns of human migration. Since the genographic project began, Dr. Wells has collected DNA samples from more than 700,000 people from around the world. It is Dr. Wells who said he said quite remarkably and quite revealing that the DNA tells a story that is very clear. Within the last 200 years, 200,000 years, we all share an ancestor, a single person, mitochondrial Eve, you might have heard about her in Africa, an African woman who gave right to all the mitochondrial diversity in the world today. Dr. Wells said, I am sure this statement or the scientific conclusion by Dr. Wells paints a clear picture of why we are here today. We are effectively part of an extended African family. Relating to this conclusion, Henry Louis Gates Jr a director of the Hutchins Center for African and African American Research at Harvard University is in one interview once I said, in, in his one interview once said, we are all Africans. Again, this continues to show why it is relevant to celebrate our history. And I think our youth will have taken a lead to continue the legacy. I like history and storytelling, and I like to learn, constantly sharing. Let me share another key point that I learned from getting the same interview I mentioned when he answered another question. He said, 
I love Black History Month, but I want every day to be Black History Month. I want these stories, the stories of Africa and its Africans to be woven into the story of the history of the development of civilization. I want everyone, every school child to understand from day one that they are a citizen of the world. The first iron technology in the world was developed in Africa in the 1800 BC, even earlier than in India and the Middle East, Dr. Gates added. We should remember that some of these stories are painful, stories of survival and stories of resilience and the stories of victory and the breakthrough. Thus, during the upcoming festivities, I want all of us to look back and recognize the wonderful history of great African forefathers and mothers who shaped human history, African history, and in recent history, the 50 years of the formation of the African uni unity. I like the words one of the Pan-Africanists who just recently concluded his journey on earth. May he rest in peace. Desmond Tutu. If you are neutral in situations of injustice, you have chosen the side of the oppressor. If an elephant has its foot on the tail of a mouse and you say that you are neutral, the mouse will not appreciate your neutrality. The founders of the African, the founders of African unity, the African Union today, are good examples of that court. And they are a cause to celebrate Black History Month. This is now an assignment for our youth in America. We read books about Frederick Douglass, Sojourner Truth, Harriet Truman, Martin Luther King Jr., Malcolm X. Rosa Parks and more, in addition to these heroes whose ancestors crisscrossed 55 AU member states. Please reflect on continental heroes and the history makers as you engage in this festival. I thank you for listening and I wish you good uh, uh, proceedings about the Black History Month, which we are proud of, where we are talking of the lives of the people, some of them who lived before us, those who have shaped us and for us to be where we are today. And I thank you. All right, thank you. Can we please put our hands together? Thank you very much, Your Excellency, for the amazing, amazing speech. Thank you very, very much. All right, so I would love to once again um, celebrate and recognize our host um, today. And, and the man that is sitting in uh, to make this happen here at GIPC, uh, the Deputy CEO of the GIPC, Mr. Yao Amwatina Fuye. Can we please celebrate him? Thank you so much for hosting us, uh, your host today. We absolutely appreciate you. Next on the line, we're going to have a special presentation um, of the Black History Festival, uh, why we're here. We're going to have the lead coordinator um, for the festival and also the general manager of Yali TV, uh, Mr. Steven Selassie, is sure to do that for us. Um, and then after that, we're going to move on with our media engagement. Um, I think I recognized her earlier when she had not yet arrived, so I'd love to recognize the presence of Dr. Ifua. Asabi Asari, the CEO of Ghana Export Promotion Authority. Can we please give it up for her? Welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for coming. Um, so we will be receiving our lead coordinator for the festival, also for Yali TV, uh, the visionary and the lead. Don't worry, I have all the time for you, Stephen. <laughs> In the meantime, just to give you an idea of how things will roll out. Um, after Stephen is done with his presentation, we're going to do questions and answers both from stakeholders and also from the media. Um, and then we're going to have um, some remarks from our technical advisor from GATA. Um, and then we're going to have statements of commitment from our partners and sponsors, so all our key partners and sponsors, 
or have representatives actually make their statements of commitment. Um, and then we're going to introduce the festival team that is working on this project. Um, and then we're going to do questions from the media. Then we're going to have our host um, almost bring it uh, to a close uh, by giving the closing statement. And then the chairman of the advisory board for Yali TV will close it. So we're about six or seven steps away um, from where we are now. Well, once uh, Stephen is done with his presentation, we'll do Q and A's, and then we'll start engaging our stakeholders. And so, as we do the setup, uh, let me recognize some of our key stakeholders. We have GIPC, of course, supporting us. Um, we have GEPA that I mentioned earlier. Earlier, um, we have GEA, we have the GFZA, um, we have the Ghana Tourism Authority, and I will be. Um, announcing and recognizing our other key partners as we go on. Um, if Mr. Steven is ready, we're ready for you. So with a round of applause, can we receive the festival coordinator and the general manager for Yali TV, Steven Selassie SO. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I want to use this opportunity to welcome everyone present here who took our time to make it a possibility to be here. I want to acknowledge the presence once again of the African Union permanent representative to the United States of America for birthing this idea some months ago in the United States of America. It became very imperative that the celebration of the Black History Month uh, becomes a bridge that connects Africans to their roots. Be an African in any part of the world there's one thing that makes you remember that you belong somewhere, and that's when you look at our skin, you remember where you're coming from. Why? Because every African from Africa has the melanin that makes us know because of the tropics, we are black. No wonder the founding father of Black History Month decided that it was very important we look back at who we are. History has been made in science, in technology, in agriculture, in every facet of life, in mathematics, in astrology, in every facet of life. But it's time we begin to recognize those who have made these records happen. I will be unfair if I don't recognize the GIPC for putting together this extraordinary meeting. Let's give them a rousing round of applause. This engagement is just about, well, about 18 hours old. Um, we had a discussion with uh, the CEO, uh, the esteemed Mr. Yofi Grant, through our technical advisor, Mr. Dominic, and we came to the decision that it was good we had an engagement like this to really explain what we are about or what this opportunity is. I also want to specially thank Dr. Asabia Asari for making the point to be here. She also deserves a rousing round of applause. I also want to use the opportunity to thank uh, the Deputy CEO for hosting us this afternoon. There are many other personalities here representing. I've met representatives from the Ghana Free Zones Authority. I've met representatives from the Beyond Return Secretariat. Annabelle, thank you so much for coming. Special thanks to GATAC for making this happen. Um, I was buying time to see whether the technical team could expand the screen for us to see everything well. But I think we'll just make do with what we have because of time. Um, I also want to acknowledge that we have the, parliament, the chair of the Parliamentary Select Committee of Trade, Industry and Tourism also joining us via Zoom. He is so dedicated to this. I remember meeting him at the launch of the Global Africa Trade Advisory Chamber some weeks ago. And he said he's committed to this. Even though he's out of the country at the moment, he said he'll connect. So do we have the Select Committee Chair for Youth, Sports and Culture also joining all the way from Cameroon. Unfortunately, yesterday we witnessed a very sad day in the history of Ghana because our beloved Blaster lost, but he still decided he'll join this meeting today. Thank you very much. I'll go straight into our purpose of meeting here this very afternoon. Um, after meeting the senior minister a couple of times, thank you very much, Mr. Habib, 
we decided that a meeting like this was important for us to explain what Black History Festival is and what it really means to us. The Black History Festival is a program that has been designated between a number of stakeholders or partners. The African Union Mission to the United States, the Wilson Center, which is a scholar center in the name of the former president of the United States, Wilson Woodrow, and the YALI program, which is under the State Department or the U.S. Department of State uh, that handles the training program, the celebrated training program of leaders across the continent. This training program trains well over, has trained over well 42,000 young Africans from 48 African countries. And this um, department is responsible, is also part of this program. We also have its television platform, which I heard, which is Yali TV, uh, which is a television platform to tell the stories of young Africans who are making impact across the continent. These institutions, together with a number of private sector and civic organizations, to mention by a few, contributed to the birthing of this idea. Basically, the festival is an opportunity to celebrate the history of black people in conjunction with the Black History Month, which happens in the United States every year in the month of February, as Ambassador earlier stated. This festival is going to be an opportunity for us to celebrate the U.S. and Africa ties, relations over the years that we may not have had the opportunity to celebrate. Opportunities in the area of trade, opportunities in the area of investment, in the area of heritage, culture, arts, innovation. So this program is that bridge that will connect us to our brothers and sisters in the diaspora to ensure that we come into recognition of each other's works, at the same time celebrating our history whilst exposing the opportunities of the new Africa. Africa today, or 60 years ago, was fighting for independence. Today we finished fighting for independence. Now it is an economic fight. But we are in a tech generation or a digital generation. And therefore we need to expose our businesses to connect ourselves. And that's why it's a huge market out there that Africa needs to connect to. So this festival is an opportunity to build a bridge for Africans in the diaspora to connect back home and for Africans on the continent to connect with their brothers and sisters out there. This program has tentatively a number of programs. It is going to happen in Washington, D.C. between 21st of February to the 27th of February. Between these days, we are going to have on the opening day, 21st of February, what we call the U.S. or the United States Africa Trade and Development Expo. So this forum is going to be an opportunity for um, stakeholders of the American government and African Union member states to dialogue on the future of Africa. We've got it to the point where it is essential we determine the narrative of how other nations across the world see Africa. And this platform is going to be that unique opportunity for us to have a discussion on how do we connect to the wealth of resources, the technical resources out there, the professional resources, as well as the capital that the diaspora wields. So this discussion is going to bring together, once again, the Excellency, the Ambassador, or the permanent representative of the African Union to the United States, and their esteemed or distinguished ambassadors. So all African Union member state ambassadors will be part of this special program. It will also bring together distinguished entrepreneurs, of which I'm pleased to see a number of them here who are members of the Yale Fraternity. I'm pleased to announce that we have the CEO of Coliba which is a green economy company, which is doing well in Ghana and Ivory Coast. I see you. Thank you for coming, Kwame. So we're going to have a number of entrepreneurs from different African countries who are members of the YALI program and paneled with other recognized youth entrepreneurship uh, programs that produce extraordinary young businessmen and women. For example, we have representatives of the Tony Elumelu Foundation Entrepreneurship Program who will also be present there to make a discussion, make a case for youth entrepreneurship in Africa and the opportunities that are there for the diaspora to benefit from. 
So this panel is really going to feature a number of um, young entrepreneurs, some Africans who are, are been in the diaspora as well, who have registered their interest of participating in this dialogue. The second phase of that dialogue will have um, a dialogue on investment into entrepreneurship on the continent. So we'll have speakers like um, the Steve Tony, 540 entrepreneurs from almost 25 African countries who showed their interest. 300 of them made it for the three-day expo. This time around, in this festival, we are deciding to create a more larger opportunity. Even though Omicron is ravaging the world today, we believe in adversity there is light. Therefore, we'll create a conducive environment for these four days where we'll have a virtual exhibition where there'll be giant screens to show those who could not make it to the United States. And we'll also have a platform for exhibitors from the continent and the diaspora to exhibit their, their services, their products and goods, and even ideas, if possible, to attract engagement. We'll also have some of our national agencies and that's why we're having this dialogue to also have their stance at this exhibition grounds which will be happening in washington dc specifically the ronald reagan uh, building and international trade center which has a very wonderful um, space that will be hosting this of course all covid 19 protocols will be observed and we are expecting to have students from the hbcus which is the historically black um, colleges and universities will have representatives of groups coming from the cultural groups of our various tribes and countries in the United States. Specifically, maybe, for example, the Ashanti groups, the Ewe groups, the Hausa groups, the Robas, the Shona groups, all coming in that order. So they'll be scheduled for various days and times during the four days. And we expect to also have some history sections from some of our professors, which I wish I remember, but part of my uh, my colleague here, who is in charge of uh, exchange and outreach, has the list. During this program, it will end with a fashion display by the rich Ghanaian and African designs we have, with a fashion show which will end with a dinner to say a big thank you to all partners and exhibitors. On the 26th, the African Union Permanent Representative is hosting a special program which is called the African Union African Youth Diaspora Black History Month program. So throughout the day, we'll have history lessons, debates, engagements from Africans who have organizations based in the diaspora, sharing their views on what Africa should be like. So that whole day is going to be an engagement that we'll have, which will be chaired or championed by Her Excellency Ambassador Hilda Suka Mafuzi. On the 27th, we'll have a rather solemn program which is the closing ceremony. It's going to be an opportunity for us to have an engagement at the Martin Luther King Memorial Ground, uh, who had his uh, day celebrated just Monday. We'll have a solemn ceremony where we'll recognize all the partners, the sponsors, those who give their, their dollars as well as their technical know-how to support this program, as well as those who gave their support for the program. We'll have the representative of the Congressional Black Caucus of the United States Congress, the chairperson being there to speak, as well as ambassador herself, and all partners will be recognized. One will ask, how does all this program end or happen? As a young African leader um, or a yali led initiative, we still have muscles growing. Our muscles are not there yet but we want to run, we want to fly. So we're looking at who are those who have the muscles, who are those who have the capacity to make this happen. And I believe right here in this room, we have all it takes to make Africa stand tall, not only leaving our brothers and sisters to celebrate some few days and programs, but we could make it happen big. I wish we share a slide of that but I will sit here and when we have some of the institutions gathered here interested in that, we will take it to the next step. So we have packages of sponsorship available for any organization. It could be a government organization, it could be a private um, sector player, or it could be a civic society organization supporting us uh, in about five different categories. 
So we have the, the topmost category, which helps you or uh, the brand that supports us give 200,000 US dollars to own the brand name of this program for this year and have a leverage for 2023. 2023 is going to be. I wish we could we could just share the vision of what's going to happen in 2023. 2023 is going to bring far more and large representation. I'm very sure by that time we'll have defeated Omicron and we'll have been we'll be able to achieve herd immunity by then. So we are expected to have large representations. The good news is that the AFC FTA is supporting Her Excellency to ensure that this program is a trade tool as well as a historic or a heritage opportunity to celebrate us. We also have the Diamond Opportunity, which has a number of leverages. I wish I could mention them. And then we have the Gold, we have Silver, we have and the Bronze. I'm just trying to see whether I could get it here. But one will ask, how can I participate? One easy way one can participate and we seek to make it a policy is if you have a brand that represents the country, you have the opportunity to exhibit. And so we are recognizing the uh, state agencies that are responsible for investment, trade, exports, uh, and that's tourism or arts. So members of these agencies in Ghana and other, the other 54 African countries have the opportunity to represent their countries by registering to be part of this program. So to be part of this program, you can participate either as a delegate, an exhibitor, or a virtual exhibitor. So to participate as a, a full delegate and exhibitor, you have a number, we have a special package for you, we have a premium package, which caters for your round trip, it caters for your COVID tests, both here and at the, in the United States during the period, because in the facility we use, you need to provide a negative COVID test every 72 hours, minimum. And therefore, we are looking forward to also provide a health insurance of a sort for every participant who, who joins us, as well as um, your hotel, feeding, and a tour engagement. Not forgetting internal transportation to the venue of the program from the hotel and to other uh, locations that will have engagements and visitations. We also have another package for people who say, okay, I'm already, I'm already having a visa to America, for example, so I, I don't need your support. They pay a token. So they pay for the exhibition and they pay for um, other engagements that are connected to the program. For example, if you, if you are part of the program, you need to make arrangements for um, your stand. So we will help them, as a result of them connecting to this package, we will help them get their stance at the program. And if I am just in America and I've heard of this program, there's an easy way to participate. You just get your tickets, either get complimentary tickets for the seven days, or you register as a school or institution to participate, or you simply get a day's ticket, which ranges from $20 up to the total cost of $200. I will not bore us with figures here, I would love to bring my speech or presentation, which I hope next time will be clearer, to a conclusion. Any institution here that is interested in participating in the program, we have special proposal documents available at the front desk, and we are also ready to have engagements. I have a team here who will join me uh, once the program is getting to the tail end, and we are ready to have engagements or presentations to any institution that is interested. I'm making a, an appeal to the representatives here that Ghana is privileged to be a key part of this program. And the African Union has decided to make the AFC FTA headquarters be in Ghana. That is a plus. It means Ghana is the trade capital of Africa. Number two, the year of return played a good selling point for us as a, a nation of tourism. We always say we are the gateway to Africa, but in 2019, we proved it to the rest of the world. Unfortunately, COVID-19 almost took our title, but we still have the opportunity. With the Black History Festival, we have the opportunity to seal Ghana's permanent seat as the trade capital of Africa and the tourism destination, number one tourism destination. So I'm calling on institutions present here to take advantage of being 
uh, the foot in ahead of all the 54 African countries to support this program as much as we can. Let's take the chunk bites of this program so when the others come, they'll be our visitors. We will be welcoming them to the United States next year, 2023, because we took the, the, the risk. We made the daring steps to host the rest of Africa and launch this program. I've been told this is the first time that the Black History Month will be celebrated with a long festival, a curated festival. We've had wonderful programs, wonderful celebrations, but this is the first time Africa will be teaming up with the diaspora to celebrate a festival like this. History is to be made, and we are the custodians of that history. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you so much. Um, <laughs> I think behind the scenes, we're absolutely thrilled that you were able to do this without a presentation, and you have all of that in your head. So thank you very much. Um, I think this is the point where he would uh, take a little breather and we can start doing questions and answers based on the presentation he's made. Um, in terms of the technical detailing of the various uh, tiers of participation that we have, um, the team members are here towards the end of uh, this media briefing. We're going to introduce the team and introduce those who are absolutely in charge. You have the option of leaving um, your email at the front desk. We have some people there and we will shoot you an email, but we also have some of the members of the team who can engage specifically with those who are interested, either as partners or sponsors or delegates or exhibitors. Um, and so if we have any questions, this is the right time. Whether that question is coming to the uh, management team of the festival or that is going to any of our key partners, or you want um, Stephen to answer any specific question based off of what he's just presented, I think this is the time. Okay, there's a question here. I, I need another microphone. Um, and one of our reality, okay, Justin, please help me. Uh, Mama Lu is the one. She's here. Come here. Right here in the middle. Um, Stephen, I think you might have to get close. Of course, anytime anybody says made in Ghana, made in Africa products, my, my, my goosebumps start having goosebumps. Um, there are a lot of micro, small, medium enterprises that really don't have money to go to America. Are we going to virtually show products from Ghana, uh, you know, in some form or fashion to the festival participants? How is that going to be done? And how can I get involved? Okay, um, the super micro, um, you know, startup companies that might not be able to afford uh, the price to go to America, how does the virtual exhibition work? and do we have Ghanaian companies that can participate on that level? Yes, certainly. Um, for example, I'm a Yale Fellow, once again, I'm a Yale Fellow and a TEF or Tony Alumelo Fellow. I know very well that um, during this period is difficult financially. So what we're doing is, with a registration of $200, it gives you an opportunity to exhibit on this program virtually. Secondly, you have opportunity to be enlisted among the big exhibitors as well on the official website of the program. You also have the opportunity to be in the special catalog for exhibitors that will be used throughout the period of March to December for the promotion of 2023's edition. And then you also have an opportunity to have these documents sent to the agencies you are partnering with. For example, we have the African Diaspora Chamber of Commerce being part of this program. A lot of these organizations will be announced in the coming days and our website will be going up this very week, which is uh, www.blackhistoryfestivals.com. We'll get to assess these organizations and entities that are going to be part. For example, the National Bar Association of the United States, their commerce de uh, department or unit, is seeking to begin to discover some of these businesses and carry them up. So with a mega registration of $200, you have the opportunity to sell your company for more than 12 months to the next edition to be part of the next phase of brands that attract investment for the diaspora. We have a question here. Okay. There's actually a contribution that I want to make. I represent the Ghana Export Promotion Authority and uh, 
hopefully we'll be partnering with you on this journey. Um, for those of you who will be unable to go, if you are registered with the Ghana Export Promotion Authority, that's exactly what we do. We help you to carry your products into the international markets. So if you want to be a part of this program, and you are registered with the Ghana Export Promotion Authority, you register and pay just 200 cities a year. And if your product is worthy of the international market, we will carry it to this festival. You don't have to be there. We will have representatives taking care of your products, your samples, and we will look for the market for you and connect you to your potential um, business partner. So that's what we can do. But you have to be registered with the Ghana Export Promotion Authority. We will take your um, products to Washington, get a booth for you. You don't have to pay for all of these. But if you decide to go by yourself, you will have to pay for your own ticket and accommodation. The space for the exhibition and everything else will be paid for by the Ghana Export Promotion Authority. That is how the government supports exporters because um, we don't want you to just send a few things there to go and sell and bring home $5,000 and think you've made business. We want you to send your samples there and look for orders that will generate millions and millions of dollars. So that's what we do and that's what we can do to support you. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, esteemed uh, Dr. Asari. I want to add to what Dr. said. One of the opportunities we want to expose to anyone who is um, a service provider or has a product, because of the AFCFTA, it is advisable for you to be part of these state agencies or chambers of commerce recognized. Other than that, even it will be difficult for you to participate in this program. If I had the opportunity to show you the slides, it's compulsory for anyone who is registering to participate in this program to belong to a government agency, either trade, investment, arts, or tourism agency. You need to be registered because we don't want to carry any product that does not represent the continent because this is a global stage. So I'm just putting um, some more um, grease to what um, Madam Asabia said. It is imperatively important you belong to either the GIPC, you register as a member of GIPC, or the Ghana Investment, uh, Ghana Export Promotion Authority, or the Free Zones, or the Ghana Tourism Authority, or the, which one am I left out? There are about four of them. Or the recognized chambers of commerce, or you belong to the Global Africa Trade Advisory Chamber, which is one of our key partners. Without that, it will be very difficult for you to participate. One, because we, we're working at, with these agencies to ensure that they represent or they present a brand that carries the flag of Ghana in a very good manner. And that applies to all other countries who will be doing the same launch in between now and 2022 December for the promotion of 2023's edition. So um, thank you very much, Madam, for iterating that point. Okay, thank you. Um, do we have more questions? Do we have any more questions? All right. So um, I keep seeing a hand up because of that uh, banner at the back. So that's why my, my eye kept going there. <laughs> I was wondering who kept raising their hand. Uh, <laughs> Any more questions? Um, don't know why my big brother went to sit in the back. Well, I'll come and look for you somewhere towards this project because you're one of our key media partners. Um, and also, I think we should really celebrate uh, Bola. There's, there's something I've loved about him, um, which is his open door policy for young people. Um, I think that no matter who you are, once you're able to reach to the right channels and hit um, his assistant, he is going to give you um, the room and the audience. Um, so if we can please celebrate um, Bola Ray for that. He's done that for young people for a very long period of time. 
Um, I have known him for over seven to ten years. Anytime you have an idea, and I'm sure that's how it happened for you, Stephen. Um, he will hear you out, and the, the little support that he can give, he will make sure he's pushing. So thank you for being one of our key media partners and EIB and everything that you're doing. Um, if we do not have any more questions, even from the media, I think that we can move on to the next part of this program. Um, we're going to be hearing from some of our key stakeholders, um, but before we do that, uh, we wanted to have some remarks from our technical advisor for the uh, Black History Festival. They are uh, Pula Bana is right here, the Global Africa Trade Advisory Chamber. Um, he's been in most of our meetings um, with one of his key uh, 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 colleagues who is also here with us. Uh, we're going to be hearing from Mr. Dominic, uh, just a few remarks on uh, the festival and why they're keenly supporting and making it happen. So with a round of applause, let's receive Mr. Dominic uh, from Gatak, who are our technical advisors to the project. All right, thank you. Madam Dr. Kafua uh, Sabia, CEO, Deputy Director, GIPC, uh, my own uh, board chair, distinguished, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. I'm excited about this um, event, and Global Africa Trade Advisory Chamber decided to partner with them because we have presence in 21 countries, and basically, the idea is we went from Africa to the rest of the world and then for the rest of the world to Africa. Last year we had a, a team that we were working with that is Africa, it is your turn. So this time we want to portray a very positive aspect of Africa to the rest of the world and give very little attention to negative news. Um, basically this is what we seek to do and I'm happy we are partners with Jali. Have a good day. Thank you very much. Um, I think just before Stephen left, um, we heard from her. Um, I think she just stepped out. Okay. Then uh, I did mention that at some point I was going to uh, call my big brother. At that point has come already because we're hearing from our key partners. Uh, so with a round of applause, let him say something about the festival and why EIB decided to partner. Let's receive the CEO um, of EIB Network, Mr. Bola Ray, with a round of applause. Um, just to say something to us. Can we do it once more while he comes? Good afternoon, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. And standing on all protocols. Thank you very much. We're excited to be part of this great and outstanding idea. I've known Stephen for quite some years now, and uh, we've started talking about Yali TV even before it was bad. So I'm happy that yes, it's come to fruition. And I remember a couple of months ago, somewhere into last year, it was a great and ambitious, you know, idea, the Black History Festival. And for us, we couldn't say no. We believe in supporting young talents, like Kwame rightly mentioned. Because we believe that certainly Africa is rising and we have a future. So we're excited to be part of this together with the GIPC, together with GEPA, to make sure that it comes to fruition. And we're going to actually give you that media blitz and all the support that you need, not just on traditional media, but of course on social media as well. So once again, please, let's take advantage of this opportunity. Let's showcase Ghana the best way that we can. And I believe that something big is going to come out of this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, great. So we're going to go to the next step. I'm going to bring Stephen back. Um, and we are going to introduce, um, via our lead coordinator, uh, the team uh, behind the festival who have been uh, working tirelessly. I think that the beautiful thing about the team that Stephen has put together is I think we are um, outmatched in terms of women to men ratio. Uh, there's a lot of power women in the team who are making this happen. So, um, Mr. Steven, I will call you again. Um, so you introduce a festival team um, and then we can go to the next step of the program. 
Thank you very much, Professor. I'm just the um, face for this program, and um, currently we have the ambassador of the African Union to the United States as our uh, patron for this project. We also have the U.S. State Department acting as a patron and a chief advisor because the embassy here and the YALI program all fall under the State Department. So just to put all of them together, the State, uh, the State Department of the United States is our key advisor. Then we have the Jacobs Abbey Global Institute of Leadership, Global Leadership, situated in Virginia, USA, as one of our, our key advisors as well. We have the Global Africa Trade uh, Advisory Chamber, GATAC, as a technical advisor. Um, I would love to use the opportunity to also acknowledge the office of the president, which is being led by the senior presidential advisor. You know, he used to be the senior minister. So the senior presidential advisor, Honorable Yao Osaf Mafo, is one of our key technical advisors who has been telling us what to do, what not to do, how we should go about things. And I, I can assure you that this engagement is one of his directives to ensure that we don't just do things in the shadow, but it's open to as many people to know the opportunities so that people don't miss out. We'll, I would like to use the opportunity to acknowledge uh, Mr. Dominic Enchi Odro. I hope I mentioned it well. <laughs> Mr. Dominic, who is the president of Gata, is our technical advisor. He was here a moment ago. We have uh, Mr. Habibu Adams. He's right here. Please, would like to see you. Would like to see you, please. <laughs> he is our technical advisor. He is uh, a technical officer from the office of the president annex. We also have. Uh, I don't know where, where are they? Where are they hiding? So when I see you, I just mention your name. I have in our present our legal advisor in the person of Mr. Joseph B. Owusu. He is in the audience right there. Thank you very much for coming. We also have in our midst the we have a program specialist who has been advising us on the content. What should we put in? Who should be part of the program? And she is in the person of Hannah Aqua. She is right there. You want to see you. <laughs> you never know. She is the CEO of TKC Africa, very instrumental in entrepreneurship on the continent. We also have in our midst Mr. Kwame A. A. Opoku. He is also a program specialist developing the content and making sure the program goes the way it's supposed to be. Thank you very much. Uh, we have Josephine Ofe. She is the administrator of this program. We actually have two administrators. She's hiding somewhere. Where is she? Please, please come around, please come around, so that we'll know who to communicate to. So, uh, communications from the secretariat of this festival go through her. Uh, it's either her or her assistants. Thank you very much. We have also Mr. Eric Nati. He is in charge of our branding, and he had a very tough time today trying to get things in place. Thank you very much. And then we have other key personalities. Who am I forgetting? We have in our midst Mr. Mr. Fred. Mr. Fred is a, our outreach officer in the US. They are not here. We have Dr. Jacobs Abe, who was recently appointed an ambassador for the African Union. He is in the US. And then we have Dansua um, Kakra Dansua. She is at the front desk. And we also have uh, Mr. James Sapo Kuma Kuma. He is in charge of our logistics. He's also in the US. So we have a team that is in the US and we have a team that is here. We have other liaison officers in Nigeria. We have liaison officers in Morocco, in uh, Tanzania, in Swatini, and South Africa at the moment who are working behind the scenes. Because they are not, um, they are not here, I will not bore us with their names. Um, I almost forgot to make mention that there is one program that the Wilson Center is really promoting during the festival. I just remembered which is the media in Africa today, of which uh, we'll be having the Black, um, Black News Channel in the United States um, championing alongside with um, Madam Edith Dankwa of uh, that's, uh, Business and Financial Times, as well as the EIB network led by Mr. Nathaniel Adisi. 
So, ladies and gentlemen, our offices, our office for this program is located in Kukumemle, uh, that's 5 Abele Road. We also have our technical advisors and offices open as a, an outreach section at uh, the former Ministry of Business Development, uh, located at the, I think, number two, Hill Selassie Street. Um, and then also we are available to reach on these contacts. Our website is www.blackhistoryfestivals.com that will be up on Friday where people can actually register. But as we said, as Madame Asadia said, the institutions that anyone can participate through, after you get to know through our media houses or you get through us, will be to move under the umbrella of the Ghana Export Promotion Authority, the Ghana Investment Promotion Council, or the Ghana Tourism, um, or Ghana Tourism uh, Authority, or the Ghana uh, Enterprises Agency. Yes, that's the agency I almost forgot. Or you have to go to GATAC or AGI. Uh, we have the Great Accra Regional Chairperson of the AGI present here, Mr. Chonam. Is somewhere, he's somewhere, Mr. Chonam. Yes, he's right there, representing the AGI. You need to be part of the AGI or register now to be part of them to participate in this program. And then the Ghana National Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Ladies and gentlemen, I will leave the microphone to the MC. But before I do that, I also want to say a very big thank you to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs for being represented here. Mr. Daniel, thank you so much for coming. And other agencies uh, beyond return, um, uh, Secretary, thank you very much for making it a point to be here. You promised to be here. Thank you so much for coming. And any other agency that made it here, I'm very sure in the acknowledgement, will acknowledge you. And of course, to the media, thank you very much for making a point to be part of this program. All right. Thank you very much again, um, Stephen. Um, I think we're almost at the tail end of our event. Um, this is the time would have loved to engage with our media if you had any questions. Uh, but I take it that when we did our questions and answers earlier and we didn't hear from them, it means everything is uh, sorted. I know that oftentimes after these engagements is when you get into the other interviews that they ask your questions. And so uh, for that, we're going to move on um, to hear from our host today, um, who has had us here, um, the GIPC represented uh, strongly by the Deputy CEO, uh, Mr. Yao Amwatinafi. So with a round of applause, can we please receive our host? Um, thank you so much for having us here. Ambassador Hilda Suka Mufuti, AU representative to the USA, representatives from the Senior Presidential Advisor's Office, Office of the President, represented by Mr. Habib Adam, Honorable Carlos Ahenkra, the Chairperson of the Parliamentary Select Committee on Trade and Industry, representatives from the Ministry of Tourism and Foreign Affairs, Mr. Dominic Odruenchi, President of the Global Africa Trade Advisory Chamber, Mr. Stephen Asuo, Coordinator, Black History Festival, Management and Staff of GIPC, Distinguished Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen, all other protocols are duly observed. Good afternoon. So I am delighted to be speaking at the media launch of the Black History Festival 2022, an initiative which the Ghana Investment Promotion Center GIPC proudly supports. The center is committed to strengthening ties between Ghana and the diaspora in order to foster connections and to commemorate the heritage, arts and culture of our communities. Since His Excellency, the President of the Republic launched the Year of Return Initiative in 2019, the center continues to welcome members of the diaspora to Ghana and the continent at large to exchange knowledge, experiences, as well as establishing training links. The Diaspora Investment Desk of the GIPC is the vehicle through which the Centre drives its diaspora engagement programs. It was established in 2020 
under the auspices of the center. And this mandate is to harness the potential and power of the diaspora to augment Ghana's national development objectives. Principally, the Diaspora Investment Desk is tasked to engage and mobilize the diaspora to invest in Ghana. And to achieve this, we undertake several engagements locally and internationally. These engagements are done in collaboration with our stakeholders and partners of the center, including but not limited to Yali TV and GATAC, the organizers of this important Black History Festival. In the USA, the month of February celebrates and remember the immense contribution of the black community by commemorating, by commemorating the month with diverse cultural activities and several nationwide memorials. The Black History Festival is being organized as one such important initiative. The Black History Festival will showcase the best of our community's rich culture, fashion and art through the Made in Africa Expo. It will also promote and dialogue on important developmental agendas, such as Agenda 2063, quote, the Africa we want by the African Union, and how to leverage the continental free trade area for the growth and development of the continent. Ladies and gentlemen, this initiative presents a unique opportunity for GIPC to engage with the Africa uh, diaspora business community for the purposes of harnessing partnerships and increasing diaspora direct investment into the continent. We believe that such a deliberate engagement with the diaspora community would yield mutually beneficial results. On behalf of my chief executive, Mr. Yofi Grant, and the entire center, management and staff, I would like to thank the Wilson Center, the AU Mission to the US, Department of State, Office of the Mayor of Washington, and the Jacobs Abbey Global Institute of Leadership Studies for partnering with Yali TV to put this event together. Ladies and gentlemen, in closing, I would like to emphasize that Ghana is indeed open for business and extend an invitation to members of the diaspora, and indeed for that matter, all commercial partners, to grow in Ghana and to grow with Ghana. I thank you for your attention. Thank you so much. So unless we're going to do that um, once the official section comes to an end. Um, we were supposed to um, hear from our chair for the Yali TV board. Uh, he is not here presently. So we're going to have our lead administrator um, come and give us the closing remarks for this. Just been here, yeah, we will die here together. So. <laughs> but a round of applause, can we please receive Ms. Josephine O'Fair um, as she gives us the closing remarks for today's briefing. Thank you so much, Pony. Distinguished guests, all protocol observed. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here with us. Um, thank you so much for your partnership and sponsorship to come and all the collaborations that you're preparing to join Yali TV in order to make this program a success. Um, please feel free to leave your contact at the front desk and we will also be in touch with you. Thank you and have a great day ahead. And on that note, thank you very much. Uh, one more time. Um, uh, Josephine is our key go-to person, partnerships, uh, delegate engagement, uh, media conversations. Um, I, I double uh, both as a program specialist and as the spokesperson for the festival. So in terms of media, you can speak to Stephen or myself in terms of all partnership and key conversations around the festival, you can speak to Josephine. Um, let's hear from Stephen. I think Stephen wants to say something. I almost forgot um, Mr. Richmond Pekins Asante is responsible for our exhibitors. He's at the back. I almost remember. Can we see you, please? please, let's see you. So please come. Please, please come. Please come forward because so, uh, we will have our um, um, group pictures right now. So it's not out of order for you to be here, sir. Yes, so he is responsible for um, the 
exhibition. Uh, those who want to exhibit, you'll be liaising with the various students on our behalf. Thank you very much. So please be coming forward. All right, so I think we're going to do some um, um, photography. Um, and so we'll ask all our special guests to please join us. Uh, Mr. Dominic, uh, Mr. CEO, uh, Mr. Habib, please come. Um, Mr. Dan, let's do this. Uh, our Deputy Director for Business for Foreign Affairs, um, can you please join us? Uh, we acknowledge your presence here. So the Deputy Director for Business uh, Foreign Affairs, uh, please join us as well. I'm our Program Specialist, please come. Um, Bola, please join us, uh, Mr. Nathaniel Adesi. Um, so I think that you guys will do it and then the team will join um, after. I think for picture taking sake, uh, it's safe to take off your mask for a brief period. Um, Mr. Nathaniel, please join us. And then, okay, yes. Please come. Okay. <laughs> so some are up front. <laughs> uh, Stephen, yes. <laughs> Our representative from the AGI. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so we can see you. Stephen is always covering his face. <laughs> All right. Okay, so other members of the team can quickly join as well. Um, the, the festival team, where is Eric, where is... Kakra is on sword. You guys can come. Okay, yeah, let me let me come and hide here. Yeah. Um, GIPC staff, if you're here, please join. Um, there's, there's still space up front. Okay, some can be. The tallest ones can come. <laughs> you are tall. very much um, okay so whilst you're exiting we have some light refreshment that you can pick up on your way out um, thank you so much for me and thank you to the media to all our partners uh, have an amazing rest of day